Welcome, guys. Welcome to the month of love. <laughs> I used to hate Valentine's Day so yeah, much. Yeah, me too. Me too. But now I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's Galentine's. There's a whole bunch of things. You know, to I do. think it's that when Even if you're, you're younger, or, yeah. when you're younger and in school and yeah. all these things, people bully you so much. I know. If you didn't have a Valentine's. Or like if everyone else got a Valentine's Day flower, don't you remember that the school? Oh like, my who god! Do you want to send a yes, to? or the goodie bag. The goodie bag. I was like, this, this is so, so unnecessary because there's people that are obviously not gonna get yeah. something. Yeah, I know. And then they're gonna get picked on, and then they're just gonna be like waiting, like no one lost. Anything. I know. And then like even if you're single, who cares? Like you know, yeah. there's so many fun things to do. I would with love girlfriends to feed and stuff. Gen Z in oh, high yeah. school right now. Oh with my Valentine's. god! Like, what are y'all doing? I know. Can you tell us? Yeah, because you guys are savages. Not like us that we got bullied and shit like you yeah. guys like don't care and we i'm for that yeah. so i want to know i want to know anyway know. um so yeah welcome to the month of love what we're gonna do is uh for the month of february this is patreon so you guys are first in this um for the month of february we're gonna kind of try to focus on romance and love and all that stuff and of course involving medicine in it because yeah. that's what we do and so for this episode we're going to be talking about oxytocin and dopamine, which are the love hormones. Yes. All right. So I'm going to start off with oxytocin. Yes. So oxytocin is a hormone that is produced in the hypothalamus and stored and secreted by the pituitary gland. It has both central and peripheral effects. So what that means is central is more, you know, like a brain and all of that. And then peripheral effects is more like the rest of the organs, body. <laughs> I love how we're both all doing <laughs> I know. We're both doing it at the, the same time. It's still part of our peripherals. <laughs> so initially, oxytocin was associated with female reproduction, okay, specifically labor, breastfeeding, and maternal behavior. However, research has shown that oxytocin has a much wider range of physiological effects in both sexes, including its role in social and sexual behavior, protection from stress, metabolism, and the prostate gland. <laughs> Jesus. Who would have thought the prostate? Gland? I know. I know. I was like, what? Who are you? <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> so oxytocin is also involved in the prevention of degenerative disorders and has been linked to various neuropsychiatric disorders such as autism, schizophrenia, mood disorders, eating disorders. It plays a role at improving the symptoms of anxiety, depression, social behavior. Oxytocin has the potential to be used as a therapeutic agent for a bunch of treatments and prevention of psychiatric disorders. So, which kind of makes sense. Yeah. You know, it's the feel good hormone. Yeah. It's going to help it with has to, yeah. all these other things. And, you know, the brain in everyone is different. Yeah. I, we've talked about that the brain in people with probably some psychiatric conditions might have some differences too. Yep. So, chemically and even structurally, sometimes. that's what I'm saying. I think yeah. if, if, if we are able to see structural differences, then the chemical difference is going to be there too. Yeah. 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 So what's dopamine? Uh, dopamine is a neurotransmitter that plays a crucial role in various cognitive, emotional, and motor processes in the brain. It was first discovered in 1910 and later recognized as a bona fide neurotransmitter in the 1950s. I love how it's like it had to be like a bona fide yeah. neurotransmitter. Anyway, dopamine is involved in self-initiated movement and is <laughs> essential for normal motor function. Julie something. wanted to talk about sex on Patreon and I was just like, listen. Well, the anatomy of sex. We're, it's like if a sex ed class, you know, that's a lot of medicine in that. When I give a sex ed class on Patreon, no. No, I'm not doing it. She's trying to convince me I'm not doing it. Oh my God. Okay. All right. So dope, back to dopamine. It also regulates cell proliferation, survival, migration, and invasion in certain types of cancers. And dopamine has diverse pathways and interacts with various systems in the brain, including cholinergic, cholinergic, that GABAergic. I've actually never read that word, GABAergic. But it's so GABA, GABA like the actual pro um, hormone. Yeah, and opioidergic. Sure. Oh God, let's just say that word. Gluta. Glutama. Okay. So the gluta. Uh, Let me just say glutamin, cholinergic GABA. The ones like uh, opioid, yeah. okay? Yeah. Gluta, glutamate, okay? Glutam that's it. All of those hormones, okay? It's involved in that. It's involved in this, in, in that systems. pathway, yeah. Okay. 
It activates different second messengers and pathways contributing to its diverse actions. Dopamine is associated with conditions such as Parkinson's disease, schizophrenia, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, addiction, and psycho psychopath psychopathology. 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 <laughs> so like basically psychiatric pathology, okay? Yeah. Overall, dopamine is a critical neurotransmitter involved in multiple um, physiological, pathological processes in the brain. So there's dopamine. Very important, obviously, in many things, in many ways. I just think that, like, dopamine is like the happy hormone and you're like, all right, so that's dopamine. Yeah, you know, involved in a lot. Like the total opposite of dopamine. I knew me. I knew me. I knew me. He's so cute. Nice berry animal. Yes, you are. <laughs> I love his little ears. They stand up a lot, but when he's like all cuddly, which is very rare. This is a very rare occurrence. Yeah. He's very gentle and he's very cat-like. So it's only he'll give you love when he wants. And he's like, like, oh my God, he can literally just stay here forever. Remember when he cuddled with you in New York? Of course I do. <laughs> he never gets kisses. He loves me though. He loves Dia. He remembers. I know, Bobby. Remember our sleepover together? <laughs> yeah. We had such a good time. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Okay. Sorry. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. This anyway, is my dopamine to... release. Yeah, like, exactly. Like a little. What? You never do this. Why are you doing this now? He's like, I want to be on camera. I know, right? Okay. Okay. You can stay there. You can stay there. But let us, let us do this, please. Please. I love you. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> okay, like, there he goes. He's like, oh, okay, I get it. All right. Look at Brownie's face. Brownie's like, like, you motherfucker, book? that's my podcast. <laughs> exactly. You come in I'm here. The podcast dog. <laughs> no, like, you could kind of. No, yeah, look at him. Look at him. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Oh, God. God. Go. Okay, he let's, knows. let's not... He knows. Okay, they're just going to toss her all around a little bit. Anyway. All, all right. right. Okay. Are you. So what is the difference between a hormone and a neurotransmitter? Jealousy. All right. So a neurotransmitter is a chemical that's released by a nerve cell to send a signal to another one across a small little thing, like a small little gap called a synapse. I will put a picture right here. Yes. So a hormone is a chemical that is produced by an endocrine gland, okay, and travels through the blood system, okay, to the cell of this new organ. So wherever it needs to go, right? Some of the main differences between neurotransmitters and hormones are that neurotransmitters act locally. Okay, so literally between nerve to nerve, whereas hormones uh, act globally. So it can start in your brain and it can end somewhere else. Okay, so <laughs> this is the hormone dance. Uh, I don't know. Jules is definitely oxytocin <laughs> right now. <laughs> so... Neurotransmitters are released in response to nerve impulse, whereas hormones are released in response to various other stimulus, stimuli, okay, mm -hmm. such as stress, temperature, blood sugar levels. A lot of things can cause hormonal disbalances yep. or triggers. Neurotransmitters are mainly proteins, whereas hormones can be proteins, lipids, or steroids. Why are oxytocin and dopamine typically associated with love? Oxytocin and dopamine are associated with love because they play key roles in the neurobiology and the reward, attachment, all of that. So uh -huh. uh, refer to our, what, what were they called? Prairie, prairie voles? Prairie voles. On our December, no, January recap. Yes. About uh, dopamine levels for those little, those poor little, little animals. Voles. Yeah. No. Oxytocin is also known as the love hormone, oh, right which on. promotes the social behavior and bonding. And it's involved in what we had said before, like maternal kind of behaviors and emotion and also romantic love behaviors. It acts by altering the activity of the neurons in the ventral tegmental area. OK, the VTA, which produces dopamine and the brain's main reward signal. So dopamine, in turn, is responsible for generating attention, desire, motivation, and romantic love. The release of oxytocin and dopamine in the brain is associated with a feeling of love and attachment, and their interaction helps regulate the behaviors related to love, such as maternal care, social bonding, and romantic interaction. <laughs> Have you ever purged <laughs> Mario? 
I don't know. <laughs> I highly doubt probably it. Probably not. It would pro- probably in a joking way. I'm not going to. I can't even do that. I you, sound. You can't roll the R? No. Oh, okay. I, can, I can roll the R, but that's so weird. Who the fuck does that? Like, seriously, who does that? No I one, do right? Jokingly. Okay. <laughs> if you do that, I want to know who you are. Or, or don't. Yeah, actually, I don't. I don't. <laughs> actually, don't. <laughs> we don't want to know. Okay. So, understanding the mechanism of oxytocin and dopamine in love is not only important for the academic knowledge, but also its implications for the treatment of psychological disorders and addiction. I thought you okay. were laughing at what I was doing with my tongue. Like, my ADD oh, went... Oh, no, I didn't. I didn't my, see you. My ADD went on a tangent now, and I'm like, oh, can you roll your tongue? And then I started, all right, I can roll my tongue, and then go... Oh, like... <laughs> Flipping it on camera. It's just like, what am I doing? And then... Oh, I didn't even see you. It's fine. I didn't even see you. I was reading. Yeah. Anyway. <clears throat> okay. So can you increase these hormones? There are many natural ways to boost your dopamine and oxytocin levels, which can help you feel happier and more vo- motivated and more connected to others. Some of the most effective methods are eating foods that are rich in protein, such as turkey, beef, eggs, dairy, soy, and legumes. These foods contain amino acids that are essential for dopamine production. Eating foods that contain probiotics, such as yogurt, kefir, sauerkraut, and kimchi. I'm not about like probiotics and foods that have probiotics. I don't know I why. Love, I love it. I just, yeah. I can't do kombucha. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was the episode that we talked about the kombucha? Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember what it was, uh, what episode it was. I forgot about your kombucha stuff until right now. I just had a visceral reaction. Because I still... Y'all, this Look. girl, I've, got, I've gotten her to get these goosebumps three times this episode already. Only she can you do know, that. clammy hands. <laughs> clammy my little hands. My hands are super clammy right now. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> no. I know. I'm, I'm like kidding. She's like, I can't help it. I have clammy hands right now because I'm like grossed out by kombucha. I just remember taking the swig, fully thinking, (laughs) fully thinking that it was going to be something sweet, like, you know, a juice. (laughs) And it's the most sour thing. Freaking vinegar is what it, like, (laughs) gross, like, like, uh, what's the apple cider vinegar? Like, I drink that every morning. I do. Oh, no, I can't. No, I cannot. I'd rather not. Forget it. I can't. <laughs> but have you tried kefir? No. It's like a yogurt. I, I Yeah, I've seen it, but I, I barely what like yogurt. What about kimchi? Ugh. I don't like any of this stuff. I love it. None of it. Mm, like, yum, I, could, yum, yum, yum. I could maybe, maybe tolerate some yogurts, but like I'm not even a fan. I've never been a fan, really, of yogurts. But anyway. What? Yeah, it's weird. These foods... In other words, if you are like her, unlike me, <laughs> they can they can improve your gut health, which may influence your mood and behavior through the production of dopamine and other neurotransmitters, which check out our episode on that, on the mind-gut connection. Yes, we that was talk a big about one. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Listening to music or playing an instrument. Music can stimulate the release of dopamine and oxytocin, especially when you're, when you improvise, sing, when, when you improvise, sing, or dance along with it. I know that me in the car, we have. Oh my God, lately I've been on a dopamine kick in the car. I am all about the American Idol moment in the car. Yeah. All about it, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, anyway, that's where I do it. I don't do it in the shower because my house is usually full, so I'm not gonna do that. But in the car, I'm going for it. <laughs> Saw me. Saw me, me there. And it, no, and if, even if it's MR, I don't care. He's gonna hear it. Yeah. And my, oh my God. My, my kiddo so yeah he's gonna he's used to it by now he's just like Fuck, here we go again <laughs> he's just on his ipad like jesus christ anyway exercising regularly physical activity can increase your dopamine levels and reduce stress hormones it can also trigger the release of endorphins which are natural painkillers and mood enhancers practicing yoga or meditation these practices can help you relax focus and balance your emotions they can also increase your oxytocin levels by enhancing your sense of well-being and social connection having sex or cuddling with someone you love obviously with someone you love um these intimate activities can stimulate the release of oxytocin which can strengthen your bond and trust with your partner oxytocin can also reduce anxiety blood pressure and inflammation hugging kissing or holding hands with someone you care about 
These simple gestures can also boost your oxytocin levels and make you feel more loved and secure. Being kind and generous to others, doing good deeds, vol volunteering, donating, or helping someone in need can increase your oxytocin levels by making you feel happier and more fulfilled, which is absolutely true. Been there, done that. Like yeah. when you, I mean, even if it's, even if you're like not really a people person, like me, <laughs> going to the animal shelter, great. Love, yeah. love that. And spending time with your friends, family, or pets. Galentine's. We should do a Galentine's. I so kind of really want to do a dinner party for Galentine's, but I'm trying to get the house ready. I want to move in before I do all of that. But. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, socializing with people who support you and make you laugh and increase your... This will obviously increase your oxytocin levels and reduce your stress. Playing with or petting animals can also have a similar effect as you recently just saw. Us yeah. having a total moment with Numi from there for that. He's like, I'm all about these love hormones. He can bring it on. <laughs> all right. So how to tell if your dopamine and oxytocin levels are low? There's no clear answer to this. Okay. Or no clear, like, measure. Yeah. Um, but anyways, it's not simple. There's no simple way to measure your levels of dopamine or oxytocin as they're pretty complex. And the dynamic in it are vary depending on many factors, yeah. such as your mood, your activity, your environment, the health condition that you're in. However, same symptoms may indicate that you have low levels of these hormones, such as lack of motivation, energy, focus, or pleasure, depression, anxiety, mood swings. If you have a low sex drive or difficulty bonding with others, restlessness, insomnia, poor sleep quality, tremors, stiffness, or balance problems in case of a dopamine deficiency. So this kind of reminds me a lot of just the part on a lot of factors right like mm. environmental factors where you are but your health condition also is very very important yeah so for example people that suffer from anorexia because they are so malnutritioned and they have like no protein or anything your body starts like using its own Damn. like yeah. protein right and then neurotransmitters are like chemical but like the hormones are made from proteins and all these yeah. things so they start having deficiencies in these because they are not able oh, to make them right 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 so that's why sometimes when you have severe anorexia they're very like flat affect they're very you know slow to respond oh. and like it's all these hormones that are lacking in them because of this poor nutrition that's horrible but really interesting yeah Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. So that's just one example. Yeah. Um, Parkinson's is another Parkinson's is another one. one. Exactly. I know it's, it's uh, dopamine, right? Yes. But it, yeah, you're lacking it. Yes. Yeah. It's And that's when you get the slower movements. And exactly. The, the trouble walking or mm -hmm. talking. The and shuffling all that. gait yeah. and all of that. Absolutely. But um, it just, you know, it's it's multifactorial, but all in all, it's you, you need to set up your environment. You need to make sure that you're like in you know, that you're doing like well. Mm -hmm. It also, just another example is like diabetics, like they have problem with sex and mm. that's a huge thing too. So it's all these things that you need to- So many things, yeah. So many things that you need to take into consideration and just take care of yourself in order to feel your happiest, right? Yep. So take care of yourself. <laughs> so if you experience any of these symptoms, you may want to consult your doctor for a proper diagnosis and treatment. You may also benefit from some natural ways to boost your dopamine and oxytocin levels, such as eating healthier foods, kind of like we were just saying right now. Yep. Exercising regularly, listening to music. That's like the best. I know. Oh my God. I know. But don't now, don't, don't put day? on the sad playlist. Like put no, <laughs> like do at all. Yeah. Put like, oh my God. When playlist. I was in residency and I was so stressed, I lived in my apartment and my, I loved my apartment in South yeah. Tampa. And it was small, but perfect size. And yeah. I would just grab a glass of wine oh, and yeah. I would dim the lights. And I was having my own dance party oh, yeah. by myself, completely yeah. bl blasting the music. Yeah, yeah. It was great. Oh, that's like, a vibe. what a boost. Yeah, that's, it's a vibe. And you know, I didn't, I didn't do that for a long time. And when I did it, I was like, God, I forgot how good that felt. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. just dance it yeah. out. Um, oh, man. Anyways, listening to music, practicing yoga or meditation. That's a huge one that a lot of people put off. Yeah. And once you actually start doing it, you kind of start thinking like, I know. I should do this more often. I, I got to get back into yoga. I used to do it and I loved it because of that. The feeling afterwards was just like, 
Oh, yeah. I know. <laughs> we should do the, have you heard of in Miami, in Vizcaya, the yoga on Sundays? No. It's free yoga on Sundays. And oh, we should do that. Yeah. And then there's a farmer's market. Oh, crap. Evie, do. let's do that. Yeah, we should do that. Funny medicine takes over. Yeah. <laughs> Funny medicine. We're just going to record outside at the park after our yoga class. We'll buy some treats. We'll be on TikTok and Reels. Yeah. For sure. So another thing that can boost this is... Sex. Okay. Chicka, wow, safely. Wow. Safely. 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 Safely, guys. Um, or, like, you don't have to have sex. You can just spoon with someone. Just cuddle. Like the little bowls. Okay, yeah, like no, the little bowls. In our previous Gotta episode. Go back to our previous episode to know that. <laughs> the cuddling. Um, hugging, physical contact, kissing, being mm-hmm. kind, generous, spending time with your friends and family, or, and like we said, your pets. Yeah. Cat, dog, lizard. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be like like a love interest. Yeah, exactly. So what are some disorders related to these hormones? Oxytocin. It's associated with several disorders, including psychiatric disorders such as autism, depression, schizophrenia, um, obsessive compulsive disorder, aka OCD, bipolar disorder, and anxiety disorders. It is also linked to neurodevelopmental disorders, eating disorders, and post-traumatic stress disorder, aka PTSD. Additionally, oxytocin dysfunctions and normalities in the oxytocin receptor have been implicated in diseases related to reproductive organs, such as endometriosis, uterine adenomyosis? Adenomyosis, yeah. She just says it. Better. Uterine aden- adenomyosis. That. As well as cardiac disorders, osteoporosis, and ob- obesity. Wow. Obesity. Obesity. Wandering. 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 There we go. That's soul. the soul that takes over me sometimes. <laughs> The expression and signaling of oxytocin receptors can be influenced by early stress, early stress, early life stress, leading to deficits in social behavior. I'm sorry. I just, I thought I was towering over you. (laughs) I'm sorry, guys. I was just, I was so like, I was this big. And I was like, let me just get down to her level a little bit. It's just the way you did it. I know. (laughs) So. By early life stress, leading to deficits in social behavior, emotional control, and stress responses, which may lead to increased risk of anxiety, depression, and other stress-related neuropsychiatric um, diseases. Overall, oxytocin is involved in a wide range of disorders, highlighting its importance in various physiological and psychological processes. Yes. So that's oxytocin. (laughs) All right. So... Dopamine. Uh, Disorders of dopamine. Dopamine is associated with several disorders, including Parkinson's is a really big one, uh, schizophrenia, Huntington's disease, addiction, attention deficit disorder, impulse control disorders. In Parkinson's, dopamine is a... Dopamine dysfunction is a key feature leading to motor symptoms and neurodegeneration. Schizophrenia, the abnormalities in dopaminergic signaling have been implicated in the pathogenesis of the disorder, but there's a lot tying into schizophrenia, but that's just one part of it. Huntington's disease, the dysfunction in dopamine metabolism is involved in the disease progression as well. Huntington's is just awful. awful, It really is. Uh, Mm -hmm. Dopaminergic signaling is also implicated in addiction with malfunctions contributing to addictive behaviors. So again, we should do one on addiction. Okay. Or at least add it to the list. Oh, yeah, yeah. Massive list. I know. Which um, is great. It's... Again, we'll never have any, never no. ending content. Endless. Yeah. So but that's, time, that's five years pass by, we could probably do another episode and it's like completely changed. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. In ADHD, dopaminergic dysfunction is associated with attention and impulse control deficits. Uh, and finally, dopamine agonists, so used in treatment of Parkinson's disease and other conditions, have been linked to development of impulse control disorders. Okay. So those were the love hormones yeah. for all of you. Obviously very important. Obviously yeah. involved in many, many things. Yeah. Uh, good things and bad things, as we just mentioned right now. So yeah. again, if you feel anything that's off, anything in your mood or anything at all, like talk to your doctor. You yeah. know, there's really, there's a lot of medications and a lot of things to help you out in these things. Mm-hmm. And exercise, guys. Yes. Exercise is really, really a game changer. And start small. Oh, it doesn't mean that you have to do a freaking 5K tomorrow, you know, yeah. just take a walk like walking just yeah it's such a it's i don't know it's under underestimated or overseen or whatever that's the word that's it anyway underestimated overseen so many other words whoa 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 he's so aggressive and he's not he's not at all 
at all. Like, he's a big for nothing. He's just, he's got the best bark in all of them. Oh my god, I feel so bad I blocked Barn. He's like a bark. He's doing like a f eight point turn. <laughs> Are you listening to Taylor with howling? My god, they're howling. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.